Welcome. My name is Felicia Conrad Bavard, and I work in the collections department at Ford House. Ford House is the historic estate of Edsel and Eleanor Ford. It's a home full of stories where Edsel and Eleanor Ford raised their four children, and today it's a national historic landmark. Now we invite you to wonder, learn, and explore with us. Today we're going to explore some of my favorite things, the late 19 teens and 20s, auto touring, camping, and cooking. In 1915, Edsel took a transcontinental trip with some of his friends and drove out to San Francisco for the World's Fair. He kept a journal on that trip, and I want to share a couple of journal entries with you that he wrote. St. Louis, Missouri, Monday, June 21st, 1915. Met all the boys at breakfast to discuss time of leaving. Decided to leave at noon. All went to Ford Branch for camping equipment, which had been left on Saturday. Took moving pictures of departure. Mr. Anderson piloted us out of town as far as Norman, D.C.C. Road to St. Charles, very, very good. Struck Big Wash a few miles from there. Four feet of water on road. Made 10-mile detour. Became separated from Stutz and Cadillac. Found terrible mud in spots. Stuck two hours in one place. Road entirely washed out in Mineola. Arrived at Columbia 2 a.m. He also wrote, Camp near Walsenburg, Colorado, Monday, July 5th, 1915. By 7 o'clock, the occupants of Fort Tent had their backs so sore from hard ground that they decided to get up. Calkins and Ford scrambled around for firewood. R. Gray scrambled the eggs. Got started at 9 a.m. Had a good run to Trinidad on fine roads. Big, big 4th of July celebration going on. So after they pick up camping equipment, maybe something like this stove here, they started camping at a few locations along their route. In, the, in one picture, you can actually see his camp stove from 1915. So today I thought I would share with you my 1925 camp stove. Now while it's not exactly the same as Edsel's would have been, um, it probably works a little bit similar. So they would actually take gas, siphon it out of the gas tank of their car, and put it into the container over here. Then they would be able to pressurize the gas, aerosolize it, and light it, up, light it on fire to be able to cook on. Now, today I don't really think I want to cook on gasoline out of my car, especially not in my kitchen. He also talks about having scrambled eggs for breakfast. We're gonna try a little bit different recipe of rolled oat cookies, but hey, who knows, maybe he made that on his trip to San Francisco. So, one of my favorite things is to try historic recipes and make them because I feel like I really get a chance to taste history then. So I thought I would share that with you today. We're going to make a rolled oat cookie recipe from a 1918 cookbook called Camp Cookery, a Cookery and Equipment Handbook for Boy Scouts and Other Campers by Ava B. Millam. So I have all of our ingredients out here. First thing first was I sat my butter out a little bit ahead of time so it was soft. Now we're going to incorporate all of our dry ingredients. So we have two cups of rolled oats, Two cups of flour, two thirds cup of sugar, and a teaspoon of cinnamon. Now if you're like me, you really like a lot of cinnamon, so I threw a little extra in there. So we're gonna stir that up. sure it's mixed really well. So you have a consistency similar to that. Now we're going to cut in the butter. dry ingredients, working it until it's kind of crumbly. I always like to take two knives and kind of cut the butter up a little bit, and then when I get towards the end, I'll use my fingers to kind of crumble it up. Two butter knives and kind of work them in opposite directions against each other to cut up the butter and 
Then when we get kind of towards the end, I like to take and use my fingers to get out the last little chunks of butter. You don't want to bite into a cookie and just get a bite of butter. Right. So once all your butter's worked in, you'll see it's kind of got a crumbly consistency. Then you're going to dissolve a teaspoon of baking soda and a three quarters cup of hot water. You're just going to keep working your dough until you have kind of a stiff dough that you can roll out on a floured surface. Looks like my dough might be ready. Clear off my surface. along a soup can. You can use it kind of like a rolling pin, but I have a rolling pin since I'm at my house. That's a little bit uh, more efficient, so we're going to go ahead and try that. Just add a little flour to keep the rolling pin from sticking. And you want to roll it out until it's about a quarter inch thick. Smells delicious. Okay. And then once you got it rolled up, it says you just take that same soup can, and I always like to put a little flour, and use that to cut out your cookies before you cook them. while camping. And there's, the recipe's really made to be cooked on a camp stove or on an open fire. So you can do it on a griddle or you can do it in a skillet. And if you don't want to do that, you can put it in your oven for about 300, at 350 degrees for about 12 minutes and they'll turn out pretty similar. So we're going to go ahead and move over to the stove and try cooking a couple up. So we're going to throw some of these on a nice hot griddle and cook them until each side is brown. The times for how long it's going to be on each side is going to vary based on how hot your griddle is, what temperature you're cooking at, or if you're using a skillet, if it's cast iron, if it's steel. So you just got to kind of watch them to see when they start to brown. So it's been about two and a half, three minutes, and you can see that they've kind of risen a little. So we're gonna go ahead and give them a flip on my slippery griddle with a silicone spatula. And they've just started to brown, it looks like. Looking great. Give it another couple minutes until they're brown on the other side, and then my favorite part, we get to try them. Mm, they smell delicious. I'm gonna 
Go ahead and pull these off. Making sure they're brown on both sides. Now for my favorite part. We're going to try them. And, you know, I thought it might pair nice with some fresh apple cider from a local cider mill, so we'll give that a try. really good. It tastes a lot like kind of a cinnamon oatmeal breakfast biscuit. Probably be really good with some apple sauce or maybe even with some scrambled eggs. Well thank you for joining me to get a chance to try to taste history. I hope you try this recipe at home.